Hello, I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. Where do development projects in the suburb of Amherst stand? I talk with town supervisor Brian Culp to find out. Also happening in Amherst is a long-standing summer tradition, old home days. We will take you there. Plus, sampling the sights, sounds, and food at the nation's largest two-day food festival. That and more right here, right now on The Big Picture. everyone and welcome to the program. Amherst was founded in 1818 in the area adjacent to Buffalo, named after Lord Geoffrey Amherst, Commander-in-Chief of the British Army in North America. The area includes the village of Williamsville, the hamlets of Eggertsville, Getsville, Snyder, Swarmville, and East Amherst, with the Erie Canal as a northern border. Amherst is home to the North Campus of the University at Buffalo, Damon University, thousands of businesses, and a robust real estate market. The man in charge is Amherst Town Supervisor Brian Culper. I got a chance to talk with him recently about this vibrant community. We're here talking to Supervisor Brian Culper from Amherst. And getting an update about all the exciting developments that are going on because every time we pick up the paper or the newspaper or turn on any of the media, it's Amherst, Amherst, Amherst. So right now it's like a hot subject, a hot place, a hot place to be. <laughs> it's the place to be, right Brian? I, I so love hearing that. The first thing we, was, uh, we were talking about is uh, the other day is this uh, Station 12 because I was passing by and I, you know, on Sheridan and I mm -hmm. keep think, looking over and I keep thinking, What's happening there? We're waiting. We're waiting for retail. We're excited. There's a lot of movement over there right now. They're finishing off their site work, and then they're going to be able to start putting stores in. We don't know which stores are coming. <laughs> <laughs> so um, fingers crossed, we're hoping that we still get some of the same stores that they originally had advertised. But uh, it's exciting. You know, they're, they're a significant um, set of, uh, of buildings over there right now between at home and Whole Foods. So, having the rest of the site come online is going to be pretty pretty good for that whole neighborhood and really give um, Eggertsville an anchor at the north. And it's it's like I pass it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you pass it because Absolutely. I'm up and down Sheridan. I'm like, oh, when is something going to happen there? You know, so it's sim similar, I guess, to Westwood, the talk about Westwood. When I was coming to talk to you, I don't know how many people said to me memories they have of Westwood. Westwood it's Westwood, just... Yeah. It's synonymous with this area, and seeing it, you know, like that all this time with nothing there, it's. I think it's just upsetting to people. You know, besides a golf course, what what it what it meant to the area, right? Historically, I mean, it was you know, been back in the 30s and 40s, it was a segregated country club, and you know, people don't think about. You know, the fact that the you know Amherst was a, had a high contingent of Jewish population in that in the town at that time and and that was you know we segregated around religious issues i mean think about that as a historical element right and then think about all the families who have come through westwood all of the people who are club members or not club members who have celebrated you know all sorts of events in their lives weddings um you know all sorts of occasions graduations um, family gatherings in that clubhouse um, and you have a lot of reason for people to be nostalgic about it and I gotta tell you the clubhouse when I walk into the clubhouse um, in its current state I get very nostalgic about it because when I first moved into Williamsville and Amherst we held so many community events there and so being able to bring that clubhouse back online as a community center and being able to reintroduce it as a community event space is going to be tremendous. It's going to take a couple of years, but it's going to be tremendous. I, exactly what you said, the nostalgic ass, because I, I was thinking the same thing when I first came to live here. I remember going to a wedding or to dinner as a guest or something, and, and it was so beautiful and old and charming, you know, so I hope it comes back. Now the, new, the plans are so exciting for it, what, yeah. might, you know, what might be instead. I think you know we really have the opportunity to to bring Amherst history to the site with Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village. 
anchor the whole thing with musical fare in a new theater space, um, splash in playgrounds, um, bring the community event space back online, and turn the entire southern end of that park into a really wonderful community gathering place. And then, you know, continue to preserve the northern sections of the park for years to come. It's green space. It's, it's phenomenal. And the thought that the town would have an opportunity to take the very center of the town and turn it into a central park, I mean, that just doesn't happen anywhere, right? A fully yeah. developed community. Um, so we're very fortunate. As much as, you know, we lost a country club, you know, what, we, what we're going to gain here is going to be there and available for families and residents for years to come. Could you hurry up because I want to be around? I yeah, promise. I, mean, I don't have, <laughs> On that, you know. No, I, I want <laughs> I you want to, to be able to be there for the groundbreakings <laughs> and the ribbon cuttings. I, I really would like to, you know. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Boulevard Mall because uh, uh, that's so important also because of uh, the, uh, the whatever it means to the area as far as not just shopping but the uh, re not just memories but the area itself the physical area is like right also plop in the middle of everything and you pass it and it's uh, so deserted and i know you're having trouble with these heritage leases that you know yeah. to, to move along yep. but it seems is it insurmountable no it's not you know and, and i've met with um with Randy Benerson from Benerson Development and Douglas Jamal, um, and we've been talking regularly about this. Um, by the first quarter of next year, we'll have taken the mall, and we're heading for demolition. Uh, once that mall's done and off the site, and the town's taken it with an eminent domain process, now both those developers we expect are going to buy back and, and redevelop. The we get shovels in the ground, you know, and if we can get shovels in the ground and in 25, that'll be a, a tremendous turning point. Growing up in the Tonawanda Amherst area, um, you know, the Boulevard Mall was the center for a lot, you know, a lot, right? I mean, as a kid, I was probably there Friday nights or Saturday nights or something. Um, the reality is it was the heart of commerce for a long time in this area. And, you know, Amherst doesn't have a traditional downtown aside from Williamsville. Williamsville is our traditional downtown, but our commerce center very much was the Boulevard Mall. Maybe the Eastern Hills Mall and Clarence over, you know, on in, to the east. But when those big places go offline, right, they create this kind of cavernous void. And now what I think we are going to have the opportunity to do is to put back a really dynamic um, mixed-use community and we're going to have people living and working and shopping and playing all in the same area. Um, I'll tell you, it's, it's a huge undertaking. Um, and this is probably the biggest project the town's ever tried to, to deal with. Um, it dwarfs anything in terms of Westwood. It, maybe since the sewer treatment plant was built, that, you know, we're talking about big investment. Um, but, you know, the state has been there kind of coaching us through this. Um, we're in a position where we feel like we have the wind in our sails, so to speak. We're very fortunate to have the developers here that we do um, that are willing to work on this project. And um, I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. We're not the only place in America that's having this problem with, you know, n people not going to, to malls anymore, no. not sh everyone's shopping differently, it's, and, you know, it, it's typical. We're following examples from Colorado, um, Texas. We're seeing examples all over the country of, of groups that have to do these mall conversions. Um, you know, and, and if you think about Hamburg, and you think about Clarence, right. and you think about ours, and you think about you know, what's still left up in Niagara Falls and the vacant site in West Seneca. Um, you know, the shopping mall legacy has been tough. You know, Pyramid has its own challenges at the Galleria. So for us in Amherst, we want to be ahead of the curve. What we're actually going to do is set a pattern that other groups can follow. Oh, I just read and we were talking about um, housing, about how big and spread out uh, Amherst is. I never realized until uh, not too long ago when it, that there's so many different areas and mm. 
it's interesting that there's like, as far as housing goes, from one extreme to the other, you've got all the university, the young people, and then you've got the problem of, of senior citizens, where are they going to go? And there's not, there's not enough space and there's not enough housing. So what are we, what are we gonna do? Well, you know, we, we definitely have to create purpose-built senior housing. We know that. We have a standing need of probably 1,500 senior housing, you know, at any time. Uh, we also need more student housing. The reality is we still have pressure for student housing. As long as UB grows, Amherst is going to continue to, to want to grow. So we have to start to look at places along our arterials um, in, in areas that make sense where we can handle the traffic and say, hey, how do we get mixed use? You know, will people live in apartments here? Um, apartments come with trade-offs. You don't get the yard, right? So you have to build parks. Um, but the reality is Amherst is maturing. We desperately want to hold on to our agriculture in the north and our, in our open space in North Amherst. That's an asset. Um, so we are, we're currently working on um, in agriculture preservation um, and making sure that we keep agriculture north of Shellis Road. Uh, in order to do that, and then we have to figure out ways to, to renew ourselves. In, in other spaces. The Boulevard Mall is case in point, but there's other places. I mean, if you see conversions happening at North Forest and Maple, people are buying old apartment buildings, starting to renovate them. Huge renovation by Related at the Allenhurst and Princeton apartments. Um, every one of those units got rebuilt, 92,000 a unit, you know, infused into those projects that are dynamic, right? Big dynamic projects that transform neighborhoods. They, they build um, playgrounds and they've built landscaping into yeah. these wonderful now um, streets that, that are back in online flourishing. But it, but it takes a lot to go and rehab those spaces and say, hey, we want to really turn this into something. So when it comes to senior housing, when it comes to young professional housing, you know, it's a good problem to have to have a, a ready market for it, uh, but it's a challenge to get it in. Everyone has the same challenges, but I think ours, I say ours, since I'm a resident uh, here, are bigger in many ways because Amherst is so big and important in the, in the scheme of uh, all of Western New York. I think that is good and bad. Well, you've seen the transition from, you know, sleepy suburb outside mm -hmm. of Buffalo to, mm -hmm. you know, a, a metropolitan center unto ourselves. I mean, Yes, we're second to Buffalo in the region. However, we have our own economy, our own economic heartbeat. More people come into Amherst daily than leave Amherst. So we're really an engine here, and that means we have other responsibility we have to think about. Uh, and preserving our culture and our way of life, uh, preserving the qualities of the town, you know, those are, those are challenges that, you know, we have to deal with every day as as a town and as town residents um, to make sure we're still getting what it is our our families are looking for here. I'm smiling because when we were coming over to talk to you, uh, I was saying to John, I feel like whenever, especially in Williamsville, I feel like I'm in Mayberry, you know. Yeah. And and somebody said they just watched it on our station the other yeah. day, Mayberry. So, and we don't want to lose that. So this is a really exciting time of year, more so than ever in mm -hmm. Williamsville, because we have old home days, which people may wonder, what the heck is that? Um, well, to me, it's, a, it's about a coming back together, right? It started off as a group of class reunions that were all happening around the same time. And it was about people coming back home, coming to this center to, to celebrate you know, where they grew up, where they came from as a collective. Uh, you talk about Williamsville and compare it to Mayberry, and I'll say, you know, there was a time um, where old home days and a lot of our events had dropped off right before the pandemic, right? People started to lose some interest. And I think going through two years of the pandemic reminded everybody right. how important it was to come together and to celebrate, you know, being here and what this place means to people. And it returned last year, um, and, and this year it was as big as ever because, you know, there was that loss of oh, you, you don't we took it for granted a little bit. Old home days is special because 
it doesn't just run parallel to every other community's Fourth of July celebrations. Exactly. You know, it is its own thing and its own special week. And we celebrate all of the sort of love for the nation and, and love of the, of the community that anybody else does. And we do it on our own terms. Thank you so much for joining us, Brian. We hope to see you again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And, you know, I look forward to, to, you know, being able to talk to you a little bit more about Amherst in the not too distant future. Thank you. We thank Brian for spending time with us. If you would like more information, go to amherst.ny.us. And with old home days happening recently, our hometown camera was there for the community parade and to find out what this summer celebration is all about. Hi, Rich. I know that the Jolly Boys are instrumental in this and have been in this parade for so many years, but I wonder if a lot of people don't know what the purpose and of the Jolly Boys is. The Jolly Boys have been in uh, organization, been in existence since the 1970s. We have completed old home days, kicking it off with a parade since uh, in the 44th straight year. It's our 44th straight year. And all the money that we raise through old home days goes to charity, local charities. We try to keep it all home. We've donated money to Central Amherst, their challenger division, which is a youth handicap baseball league, uh, Miracle League in Grand Island, which is the same thing. We give sums of money to uh, Amherst Youth and Recreation and everything with, with, we help them out a lot. And I know you've also helped kids escaping drugs and a lot over the years. Yes, that has been one of our charities that we donate money to uh, on a, on a regular basis. Dick Gallagher was a, was a jolly boy. Um, he, was a, he was a great friend of all of ours. Uh, that is one. This year our tip jars goes to Kaylee's Kindness, which is for girls that have cancer and going through the process of treatment and also sleep, sleep in heavenly peace for uh, beds for kids that do not have a bed. They were just the recipient of the money from the food bank, from the food tasting to last week too. Now comes the best part. Where did you get the name Jolly Boys? How did they begin and what does it mean? The Jolly Boy is pro approximately in 1972. The, there was uh, about six couples that would regularly get together. They had went to a festival in Ontario, Canada and, and said, we could do that here. They came up with a couple of different names. It didn't stick and one of the wives said, you guys are always happy and jolly. Why don't you just name yourselves the Jolly Boys? And it stuck. And there you have it, folks. All right, now we have a chance to talk to who I consider supervisor of Amherst for life, Susan Gorelick. Is that your title? Yeah, I think so. I'm still so much involved. This is my position now is um, the announcer for the old home days parade. I'm also chairing the 9-11 commission now and I'm doing a lot of work in records management with the town uh, and we're having hopefully going to have a new record center in the town of Amherst. So I'm still working on that and I've also been working with Musical Fair Theater on their new building at the former Westwood Country Club. So I'm really looking forward to working on that and having a hand in uh, crafting the um, new park for the town of Amherst. Susan, I am tired just listening to all the activities and what you have done for this community, but I think, I don't know if it's appreciated, but I think your name is synonymous <laughs> with Amherst, and we thank you so much, and don't stop. Thank you. I, I just love it. I love Amherst, and it's just a great, it's a lot of fun.
When we come back, find out my favorites at the Taste of Buffalo.